Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. The Flash movie was just released, and the ending of the movie, the post credit scene set up a bunch of stuff, a ton of Easter eggs, including James Gunn's big reboot of DC movies. So I know there's a ton of questions about what's really going on, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We're still doing a giveaway for tickets to the movie, and there's a bunch of stuff in the movie that we have to talk about, so I have a bunch of bonus videos planned this weekend. My breakdown and Easter eggs for the full movie will post tomorrow. Careful for spoilers if you haven't seen the movie yet because we'll be talking about everything that happens at the end of the movie during this video. But the ending is very similar to the character turns the Flash goes through during the ending of the original Flashpoint story. The main Flash realizes that he can't save this alternate timeline he accidentally created which is an amalgam of a bunch of different timelines like Michael Keaton Batman's timeline, Supergirl's timeline, and this other alternate Flash's timeline all sort of mixed together like spaghetti in a bowl as Michael Keaton's Batman joked about earlier in the movie. You wind up with a soup of timelines all mixed together basically. There was also a line earlier in the movie about learning to walk away from things like you need to learn to walk away from certain situations and that's basically what he comes to at the end of this movie. I just need to walk away. We can't save this earth is destined to die no matter what we do. And the whole idea is that his younger self was 10 years younger, hadn't learned that lesson yet and just kept trying so became a Savitar version of himself, like the dark flash they call him in the movie, which is his much older self. He makes it sound like he's been trying to change the timeline, like he's been doing this over and over again for many, many years. Like he says countless years. So he makes it sound like hundreds of years because he is an old man, like he has white hair, his skin is all wrinkled and he's covered in Kryptonian pieces that have pierced his body. You also remember that the Flash's speed force powers also slow down his aging process so he doesn't age like a normal person does. So him being this old means that he's been trying this for hundreds of years at least. That's also why his speed force lightning has changed to purple because he's learned to get faster over time. Like he's basically more powerful than the main version of the Flash. That's why he can't kill him. He almost winds up dying. During all these realizations, they have a bunch of multiverse cameos as the multiverse itself starts to collapse. I have a lot of thoughts about the way they visualize the multiverse in this movie and the cameos themselves. I'll talk about that in my full breakdown Easter eggs video because it's like a whole separate thing. I could make a whole video just about the cameos themselves. And it actually winds up being the younger alternate version of himself that winds up taking care of his older self, like the Savitar version, the Dark Flash version of them sacrificing himself to save the main Flash and because Dark Flash is basically the older version of that younger Barry, they both wind up canceling each other out essentially. So the whole idea is that the Dark Flash dies at the end of this movie, he's erased from existence so technically he never existed. That means that in that particular timeline, that version of Barry winds up dying, Zod takes over that Earth, Supergirl died, Michael Keaton's Batman died, and that universe just continues on in its own timeline. RIP to that version of Earth. The main Flash travels back to his original timeline trying to undo what he did saving his mother so ultimately she does wind up dying like he takes the can of tomatoes out of his mother's shopping cart. The person that really killed her was an unseen reverse Flash in the movie just like comic book Flashpoint. They just allude to him like you see the knife in her stomach that was reverse Flash. I'll explain him during the movie during my full breakdown in Easter eggs video. There was a reason why they didn't show him as a big character in this movie. There was already so much stuff going on. It would have been like a four hour movie if they would have included reverse flash. Barry says goodbye to her one last time and if you couldn't tell like there's a brief second where she actually recognizes the older Barry's face like oh my god it's my son. She doesn't totally get what's going on. She just recognizes his face like oh my god you're my Barry somehow. That's why she offers him the awkward hug like uh here why don't we just uh, hug it out a little bit. As he says goodbye, he makes another smaller change to the past by moving the can of tomatoes that his father got to a higher shelf so the CCTV camera footage will pick up his father's face exonerating him in present day during his trial so he'll get out of prison. Whereas before the can of tomatoes was lower, the camera didn't pick his face up so his father stayed in prison. Once he gets back to his apartment in present day where he left, everything seems exactly the same as it was as his apartment. As he rushes to the courthouse to watch his father be exonerated hoping that it'll work this time, he passes by director Andy Muschietti in another cameo scene stealing his hot dog. Then when his father is exonerated, when he goes to the courthouse steps with Iris West, he tells the reporters basically a version of his story about the spaghetti, the timelines that Michael Keaton Batman told him earlier, basically telling all the reporters in broad daylight exactly what happened without getting into too much detail like here's what I did changing the timelines but using very vague spaghetti terms. He gets the date with Iris West finally. 
And as Batman calls him to come celebrate with him, like, yay, this is wonderful, his voice on the phone sounds almost the exact same. And as he pulls up in that same custom Mercedes-Benz Maybach, out steps George Clooney's Batman from Batman and Robin. There was a huge reaction in my theater the first two times I watched this. I saw it at a couple different screenings, and both times people went crazy when George Clooney's face showed up. Barry winds up dropping an F-bomb, like, who the hell is this guy? He says Batman out loud, not quietly, in broad daylight. Like, there's reporters walking all around them, and he's like, wait a minute, you're not Batman. And George Clooney's Batman kind of leans in, knowingly like, yes, of course, I'm not Batman. Smiling at him like, please stop telling everybody that I'm Batman. And there'll be some questions about this, too, because Barry's tooth falls out again. So I know people will be like, wait a minute, does that mean that he lost his powers again, like he lost him when he got stuck in that other alternate timeline? This time, it's meant to be more of a joke, like he still has his powers because clearly he talks about them during the actual post credit scene. But the idea is that you can hurt the Flash badly enough that it wounds him and takes time for him to heal. His tooth is fine again by the events of the post credit scene, so the idea is that he just experiences so much acute stress so quickly, like, oh my god, what have I done? I've done it again, that his tooth falls out. The credits themselves start, and during the main part of the credits, it's just meant to be a version of his save from the beginning of the movie, where he's rescuing all the babies and the dog at the hospital in the Speed Force in slow motion, with the credits playing while everything is falling in slow motion. The actual post credit scene happens a short while later, like short time jump, with Barry drinking at a bar with Jason Momoa's Aquaman near his apartment, which is the same as his original apartment, like it's the same basic place where he lives. He says he can't get drunk because of the way his powers work, which is accurate. They had jokes about this during the Flash TV show in the first couple of episodes. And he's been trying to explain everything that happened with Flashpoint during the previous part of the movie to Aquaman, but he's gotten super drunk so he can barely understand him. He keeps mumbling to Barry about getting him more drinks, like get some more drinks and gives him one of his Atlantean rings, which Barry says is Atlantean treasure. Like, I can't give this to the barkeep because it's worth so much money. It's priceless. Confirming that this alternate universe Aquaman, like this Aquaman from another timeline, is just like the one from the Justice League, or like the original Aquaman. Barry says they're almost home, and then he falls face down in a puddle, saying, no, 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 this is my home, because he's in water. Very, very dirty puddle water. With an exasperated Barry just kind of throwing his hands off, like, ah, oh, okay, whatever. And even though things seem pretty chill in this new amalgam time, like this new spaghetti timeline that he accidentally created with a lesser version of Flashpoint, just to be clear, they're not saying that Jason Momoa's Aquaman always became Aquaman on George Clooney Batman's Earth. It's a situation like happened previously in the movie where a bunch of different people's timelines all start overlapping together. In the idea of this new timeline soup that he created, this new alternate universe, alternate timeline, things aren't quite as chaotic yet. I know there'll be tons of questions about what this means about the future of The Flash and what's happening with these characters. Is he going to try and change things again? Even though it seems like it's just meant to be a funny bookend to everything, the idea is that for the foreseeable future, this main Flash here is going to stay in this new alternate timeline he created by saving his father and just learn to accept all the minor changes. Like, I guess I just have to live with this weird alternate version of Batman. Okay, whatever. Because it does seem like he's still friends with this Earth's version of the Justice League. But just to be clear, he's not going to go back and undo his father's exoneration just to get back to that original Justice League Earth that he left from at the beginning of the movie. So he still has his powers, but he's basically stuck of his own accord. He chooses to stay in this new reality. There'll be a lot of talk about this too, because originally there was a very different ending with a very different post credit scene involving Henry Cavill's Superman, Flash getting warnings while he was in the Speed Force about a coming crisis on infinite Earths across the multiverse. That was what a lot of those cameo scenes earlier in the movie with the collapsing multiverse was meant to set up. I'll talk about that alternate ending, all those deleted scenes in some of my bonus videos this weekend, because the movie started out being like four hours long, and there were originally way more cameos, way more Justice League stuff, way more multiverse stuff, setting up future movies like Man of Steel 2 with Henry Cavill, Superman, Wonder Woman 3, and all that changed at the last minute after James Gunn was hired last year and decided to reboot DC movies, so they had to make a bunch of edits. So in the version of the movie that you'll all see in theaters, they wanted this Flash movie to end in a way that would explain how you never see the Ezra Miller Flash again if they decide to recast and not bring him back in the future. James Gunn and the director of the movie have said a lot about that, so I'll explain that later this weekend in my bonus videos. There's a billion Easter eggs and references during the movie, and even with the cuts, there's still a ton of cameo scenes. 
My full Easter eggs and breakdown video will post on Friday. Be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. I'll try to finish all the bonus videos for the movie as quickly as possible. There's so much to talk about. I don't think it'll be quite as long as my video for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. That was almost like a full hour long. Everyone click here for that full breakdown video. I'll update the link as soon as I post that and click here for all my other Flash videos. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.